let's look at the SP and AP area, which we have found uh, through our research to be a very important component for measuring the electrocochlea gram uh, when it comes to helping to diagnose endolymphatic high drops. For the area of the SP, and keep in mind, we're just calling it the SP area for simplicity's sake. It actually represents not only the area of the SP, but the AP as well. And the way we measure that, very importantly, is we identify the point where the SP begins. And again, in most ears, even with respect to hearing loss, the SP is going to begin at about 0.3 to 0.5 milliseconds post-stimulus onset. So we identify that point as our starting point, our baseline start. And then we take our cursor and we extend it across in a, in a horizontal fashion until it reaches the next portion of the waveform where the amplitude at that particular spot is exactly the same as the amplitude as the beginning or baseline start spot. So we draw a horizontal line across the waveform beginning where the baseline or the SP starts to where it intersects the waveform again. And that point will represent the same amplitude spot as the amplitude at the start. And then the special software is designed to take that straight line that we've just created between the SP beginning and the next point where the amplitude is the same place as where the SP began and measure the area under the curve. And that's what we will call the SP area. Again, the caveat being recognizing it is more than just the SP area. It's the SP and the AP area in combination. But to keep things somewhat consistent, let's just call that the SP area. And then we measure the AP area by taking that point where the AP begins, okay? AP and one will begin, and then connecting that to a point where the first positive peak of the AP is, and that's called AP2. And so we tap off that portion of the response that we consider just the N1 component of the response. Again, we put the cursor where it says AP uh, uh, onset and extend and then move the cursor to the point where it says AP2 and that straight line then and the area under that straight line will represent the area of the AP. And the interacoustics eclipse Evoke potential unit makes it very easy to do that. This then represents the combined uh, markings that, that show both the AP amplitude and uh, area as, long as, as well as the SP amplitude and area. So let me just go back and just refresh this again what we did. BL start marks the beginning of the SP component. BL end marks the second place in the waveform or the first place in the waveform after BL start, where the amplitude returns to the same amplitude as the start point. SP, AP1, that's kind of a combination. SP represents where the SP ends in this particular case, and so the amplitude of the SP will be the difference between the amplitude at baseline start and the amplitude where it says SP, AP1. In this particular case, the SP ends and the AP starts at the same point, which is often going to be the case. For the AP amplitude, that measurement is from AP1 to AP peak, which is the N1 peak. And so we're measuring the leading edge of the whole nerve action potential or compound action potential. And the onset of that to the peak represents the amplitude of the AP. And to form the amplitude ratio between the SP, we simply uh, divide uh, the AP amplitude into the SP amplitude, but the software and the interacoustics takes care of all of that for you. For the area, that's defined as the point where BL start and BL end, and the area under that is the SP area, and the AP area is defined by where AP1 is marked to AP2, that's the AP area. And then if we look at the table in the lower right, 
All of the calculations have been determined for us once we identify or mark the waveform correctly with the cursors. And very importantly, at the very end of that particular table, where it says SP area and SP, er, SPAP area and SPAP amp are the two important numbers for our purposes.